Welcome to the channel everybody, my name is Ryan and we are playing Scald against the Black Priory and this is episode number two of our first playthrough. If you're new and you need to get caught up, I've got a link to the playlist down below. Also the Steam page is down there if you want to pick it up or put it on your wish list. And my Patreon account is down in the description as well. I'm uploading episodes for this series early with no ads, so if you want to support the channel guys, click that link. Like I said, get access to some early content but anyway let's stop talking about it and let's join our mage ryan and see where the adventure takes us today all right like i said we've got our main character here ryan he is a magos a guild magos to be specific we'll pull up the character page level one we just got off the boat in fact we lost our companion roland overboard tried to save him couldn't i don't know whose fault that was but some sort of sea monster attacked us nonetheless maybe we can find him again reconnect with him or we'll just find some other companions i'm sure but um we're looking pretty good we don't have to go through everything here but i'll just briefly click inventory wow look at that we lost everything we had potions galore well you know relatively speaking for this early some armor weapons and we've got nothing well, we still have knowledge of our feats, most important. Our two spells, Blink and Magic Missile. And our abilities are still intact, so that's what's most important. So, we've got a person. I, can we talk? Yes, here we go. Guardsman dressed in the livery of a noble house baron. That's where we're at, the baron estate. Oh, I'm so excited for this, guys. Let's go. The guard scowls somewhat at you. Arms Master Lyra awaits you at the main entrance. You best talk with her if you're not already done so. So, I think we're going in, right? Let's go up. Okay. Ah, uh, is this here? Yes, come here, whelp. An aging auburn man in the livery of House Baron stands and scowls at you. Eyes like coal peer out from a craggy face, fringed top and bottom with wild white hair. Return his challenging stare. Walk on by. Let's return his stare. Ryan has already faced down sea monsters this day, so some old man isn't going to scare us away. The older man crosses his massive arm, steps forward, and leans towards you. So, young sellsword, come looking for a scrap, have you? Though his voice is full of gravel, there's now a glint in his eyes, as though the old coals have begun to warm up. Kaiden, you old fool, stand aside, old man, I have business with your lord. Let's do number one. I didn't know he recognized him. Single bark of laughter emanates from the dense beard as he embraces you in a crushing bear hug. Kaiden may be older and grayer, but from the force of his hug, you don't reckon you'd have any more chance of beating him now than you did as a 12-year-old. Go easy, you old boar. It's good to see some things haven't changed. Kaiden steps back and allows you to breathe again before grabbing you by the shoulders. We heard of your father's passing. Truly, he sits with the Golden Dead now. Tell me, how did he die? The Golden Dead. I gotta tell you, I'm already liking the writing on this. It's very good so far, and what little we've seen. In glorious battle at my side, drunk and reeking in his own piss. Let's not dwell on old wounds. Do you know why I'm here? Master Kato will chew your ear plenty when you see him, Ryan. Lyra, the new master at arms, awaits you by the main entrance. She'll escort you and don't ask her not to. Don't ask her not to. If you think I had a temper, the joke falls to to hide the note of anxiety in the grizzled house guard's voice. I shall look for Lyra. Diplomacy. What are you hiding from me, old bear? We didn't put any points into diplomacy i did initially during character creation but then i took him out and put him in something else but we've been on pretty good so far he's got a high intellect so let's just try it i mean there's i don't think we can back out of it at this point like if i right click or try and click off or maybe if i selected one of these it would but i'm just gonna go for it failure ah shoot Okay, continue. I won't betray my master's confidence by saying more. Best you see him yourself. The man offers a smile, but it fails to iron out the concern creases around his eyes. Very well. 
All right, if you want to explore for the old time's sake, take this lantern. Lord Baron will wait, and we don't want you getting lost in the hedge mage. <laughs> uh, okay, we continue. So we got a lantern. Whatever may come to pass, it did this old war warrior a barrel of good to see you again, boy. The old man slaps you on the shoulder in parting, almost nagging you off balance. He then seems to remember something as he leans in conspiratorially. Ah, M. -M. Damn knees are acting up again. Can't hardly sleep on account of the aches, let me tell you. I'd take an arrow in the leg any day. If you're going over to the kitchen later for a bit of grub, a bottle of brandy from the wine cellar would make me a happy man. First quest, Kaiden shifts as if to emphasis, emphasize his stiff knees. All right, Kaiden, we got you, bro. But first, don't keep Lyra waiting any longer. Talk to her first. I'll be here for later. Okay, thanks, buddy. Watch out. Oh, woof, woof. You pet the dog. Of course we do. All right, so where is she at? Probably here. Is this her? Lyra. Uh, a woman stands before the main entrance to the villa. Her posture speaks of a graceful, coiled power, that of a dueling ace. No doubt she is the new master at arms for House Baron. As you approach, she offers a quick, neat bow, just low enough to be respectful. Greetings, Ryan. Master Kata welcomes you back to House Baron. The master is eager to meet you and is ready at your leisure. However, if you wish to refresh yourself first, he suggests you visit the kitchen for some food and brandy. Perhaps walk the grounds and gardens. I wish to see Kato right away. Very well, I shall explore. Why have I been summoned? That is for the master himself to answer, and he will soon enough. For now, though, please get some food and look around. I'm sure old Kaiden would be happy to see you if you have not talked to him already. Very well. Okay, let's explore. I didn't even equip the uh, lantern. Let's do that. Bada boom. Okay, so that gives us, if you missed the first episode, that helps to like expose hidden things like chests or I'm sure doors sometimes, whatever. Kato, here's some peeps. Let's talk to him. You should be here. Charmed, I'm sure. Oops. Okay. Let's keep going. I like the kind of like the fog of war here, how that reacts to your presence. Very good. Very good. Okay, there was somebody to the north there, but let's just keep looking around. Doing checking, doing a perimeter check here. Walk through the aisles. So far I haven't noticed anything hidden. Hello. You'll find the kitchen in the eastern end of the courtyard. The garden and hedge maid is to the west. Um, and I needn't remind you that it's a poor idea to enter the maze without a lantern. Have a good evening, my lord. So we definitely want to go through the maze. Um, should we probably check the gardens first? Or the kitchen first, I mean? I don't know. I assume this is the maze. Ah. You stand before the gate to the hedge maze. It stirs old feelings of both dread and elation. The sounds and smells of the state grounds as they were long ago call to you from distant memory. You feel you could easily plunge into their depths. Let yourself go and remember. Which day dream is it? This time, are you valiantly defending me from rebels again? Embla throws a pine cone at you, snapping you from your reverie. She's ten years old, and you're a year her senior. Let's play and go hide seek in the maze. I'll hide. You faintly hear someone yell your name from the distance. You better run, star child. <laughs> oh, only my mother ever calls me that, Embla says, frowning. Where did you hear it from? Before you can reply, she flings another pine cone at you and darts off into the maze. Give chase. You hear a man's voice yell Embla's name again. Much closer now. Either way, she's lost to you in the winding passages of the maze. Your memory tugs at you, urging you to the center of the maze. All right, so let's just go in. That's good enough for me. Okay, dead end to the left. Dead end. Can we... I don't think we can. We don't even have a weapon. Definitely have a lantern. And yes, I'm hitting my highlight key, like, all the time. Trying to highlight stuff. Let's check this little corner. Oh, come here. I don't want to miss. Okay. So far, nothing's highlighting. No. I wonder if uh, like a more martially adept character could actually 
chop down these walls if you had like an axe or something. It's curious. Oh, oh, what's this? Is this the center? You stand at the center of the maze. It feels much less impressive than you remember. The ornamental pond was an ocean. The rock at its heart, a windswept island. You found me, daydreamer. You remember the tone of her voice and can almost see the impish ten-year-old girl wading through the pond. Why do you always come here? I like the water. It's so calm. Embla shoots you a mischievous look. You notice the faintest tang of ozone. She makes a slow motion hop through the water, her fingers trailing the pond's surface. Where water and skin meet, strange colors bleed and spread across the surface. Embla, you'll get in trouble. Stop it. Embla moves her fingers across the water surface like a painter's brush. Colors spill across the pond, and for a sleeping moment, you fancy that you can see cloud-topped mountains. Or was it the ramparts of an impossibly large city reaching towards the heavens? The silence is shattered by a shout, along with the beguiling images. Mistress Embla, the masters request you in the house immediately. That's my father. Something's wrong. Come on. It's mother, she'll, she's ill again. I think I cause it with what I can do. It poisons her mind. How long until mother isn't mother or until father isn't lord or your father isn't master at arms? How long will any of it last? Why are you talking like this? Do you ever feel like everything is a lie? Like there's a veil that covers everything, but in some parts it's thin enough to see through? Embla starts as your father steps breathily into the enclosed garden. He's red-faced from exertion and anger. Young lady, you can't run off like this. The whole estate is looking for you. Your mother is ill and needs you. Say nothing. Your father shoots you a stern glare. I'll deal with you later pulls his belt off. No, Embla says nothing as your father grabs her by the arm and hauls her past you back to the house. She doesn't meet your eyes as you pass. Finding yourself back in the present, a chill has crept into your bones. You best move on. Flashbacks. Okay, let's search everything in the heart here. Can we get out there to the stone? I want to jump. Whoa, what? 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 Oh, he's making just a little dot, dot, dot. I think that means there's like nothing here. Yeah, nothing to search or interact with. Can we sit? No. Okay, the heart, the center of the maze. A little bit of a disappointment, not gonna lie, but. Oh, <gasps> who's this? What? Somebody lost? Is it an ambush? Let's find out. I'm quite lost. Follow me, friend. You wanna come with? Guess, level one human, unaligned, status ready. Whoopsie. Um, I, you know what? Let's look up. Quick save. Let's go to controls. Is there a quick? Yeah, quick save. F5, quick load. F9, beautiful. I'm going to be doing that more often. In fact, boom, quick save it right there. Yeah. Very important command for any RPG. So I think I'm going to go ahead and fully explore the maze. I don't want to just leave without uncovering every little corner. And if I find anything, I'll show you guys. Okay, well, only thing I found was the entrance, or the exit again, so let's get out of here. You'll find the kitchen? Yeah, we already know that, bro. Alright, so let's pop over to the other side. We already talked to those jokers. We haven't got his liquor yet, so we'll come back to the old alcoholic in a minute. Come here, you slippery little guy. Yada yada. Oh, okay, it's another guard. Is this it? You enter the kitchen and a pair of scullions offer a hurried bow. It's all so much quieter, emptier, and gloomier than you remember. Of course, old Magda is no longer where she used to be, sitting by the oven, kind, red-faced, and tending a shank of lamb. Reminisce. <laughs> you remember the matronly woman as she sat humming to herself, pouring fat over the roasting meat. Child, come here, will you? Magda was always a beacon of kindness in her, in a childhood where such qualities were few and far between. Go to Magda. She clasps you gently with her tubby hand. Have you eaten yet? Before you can answer, she produces a small bundle of treats from her apron and hands it to you. As son to the master at arms for the great house baron, you did not go wanting, materially at least. <laughs> Man, Magda looks at you with kind eyes as you pick up the bundle. Here, here. 
He's here again, down in the cellar. He's not so good, my child, sleeping now, but it would be best if you got him to bed before his men see him like that again. I assume she's talking about our dad? The knot in your stomach is as real now as it was when you were 12. I'll go get him. Don't worry, Quest started the cellar. Don't worry, he won't make a fuss. He just needs time. You know, Ryan, deep wounds take a long time to heal. Forgot to do the voice. The old woman turns back to her meat and resumed her meandering humming. The sound of the man clearing his throat snaps you out of your reminiscing. May I help you, my lord? The man in a chef's outfit offers a hoarse voice. Leave. Don't talk to me. What did they call them? Scullions? Rap scullions. Uh, the chef offers a short bow and a tired but sincere smile. I am Chef Armand, and my humble kitchen is at your disposal, my lord. Sadly, I was told of your arrival only minutes ago, and my oven must be fired up again. You must be famished. Indeed, I am. My suggestion is thusly, whilst I stick the fire, you run down in the pantry and fetch some cured ham, cheddar, and cheese. Cheddar cheese, in fact. I will then teach you how to cook my renowned melted cheese sandwich, and you shall never want for an evening meal for as long as you live. Very well. First, I was going to bark at him for uh, ordering me around to be his gopher, but actually, that sounds pretty enticing. I'll, I'll bite. I'll do that deal. Splendid. The pantry is west of the wine cellar, and the cheese is kept in the northernmost room. Return when you have the cured ham and cheddar, and I shall provide bread and instructions. Now venture forth. Into the underworld. What? Where's the cellar? Kaiden asked me to fetch him a bottle of brandy. Oh, we're going to snitch right on Kaiden. Ha! The old wretch is too cowardly to come himself, so he sends you instead. The brandy will be the end of him, I say. Then again, who am I to deny the old fool his pleasures? You find a crate of the fine Goraman brandy or whatever in the northeast corner of the wine cellar. Continue. All right. Let's see. Where's the cellar again? All right. Continue. Leave. We got all the info from him we could. So that's the cellar, I assume. Let's see. I want to see where our quests are. Oh, here it is. I put push J and it pulled up the journal slash quest tab. Perfect. So I've been summoned. This is the main quest, I think, to meet the dude. Side quest, the cellar, exploring the grounds. Kind of, okay, medicine. Okay, I'm just seeing if it gives me like directions if those directions he just gave me are written down basically but doesn't look like they are explicitly wait maybe a journal no look at this Roland fell overboard oh so sad all right no worries I'm gonna just get those directions one more time from the chef and we're heading below all right we are below ground in the underworld let's check the quest um I'll, I'll loot that Empty bottle. Bottles litter the floor of the room. You chuckle. You what? Oh, you chuckle your, to yourself as you imagine the kitchen staff and their wine tasting sessions. No doubt much reverie has taken place here. Then a cool gust of air from the passage to the north. The wine cellar lies that way and you can almost hear faint sobbing. Ghosts, no doubt. Oh, okay. Our main character is a believer. Let's keep going. So, what's down here? Okay. We don't have much, remember. Our gear is pretty paltry at this point, so if we can encounter some mutated rats or something like we did on the ship, it's going to be a tough fight. We do have our magic missile, though, and I'm confident. Alright, obviously I didn't go to the north because I'm afraid of ghosts. But we'll, oh, ham. Yes, grab it. All right, so he said we need cheese, too, of the cheddar variety. Oh, boy, what's this? Oh, there we go. Oh, look at this. We found the cheese hoard. All right, so we will explore everything. We got our cheese. Should Yeah, we need to go to the northeast corner for the brandy, which is this way, obviously. Oh, yeah, this is easy. There it is. You're gripped by a long hidden memory upon entering this part of the cellar. You sealed it away, but in so doing, preserved its strength. And now it demands freedom. 
less complete, you can still recall smelling him before you could make out his writhing shape in the dim light of the cellar. Mistress Valerie, open the door. Your father doesn't even notice you in the throes of his intoxicated ramblings. How could they take her? Her chambers were locked from inside. Where is she? Try to shake some sense into him. Your father jolts upright, the bloodshot whites of his eyes glaring out of the darkness. We found her, wandering in the forest outside the estate. Mistress Valerie, help him stand. Halting and leaning heavily on you, your father manages to stand. She was never the same. Whatever happened broke her. It was the girl, you know. The seed was planted in Valerie that night, but how could you? No, you were but a babe yourself. You helped lead the now sobbing man out of the cellar. Stop it, father. Lord Kato instructed, I'm going to call him Lord Kato, instructed me and I failed him, but Valerie, Valeria was the one to pay the price, mind broken in that spawn of a child. Your father's voice seized with fury. Enough. Don't talk back to me, you bastard. What do you know about honor as much as your harlot mother? Your father steps away from you unsteadily, tears streaming down his contorted face. Shut up, shut up, shut up turn and run strike the man you draw a ragged breath and snap out of the memory your knuckles white you're alone in the damp cellar and don't particularly feel like dwelling there leave well we gotta get the bottles okay interesting so when i highlight stuff my guy stops but it doesn't like cancel his motion or whatever or his order loot the brandy times two one for me and one for the old man whatever his name was yeah, we didn't discover any secret stuff, unfortunately, but not a big deal. One day, we'll find the treasures of this land for ourselves. All right, um, right, let's go talk to old man. Wait, no, let's just do the thing here first. Chef Armin wanders back and forth, tending the fire and keeping the, his kitchen tidy. He has the gait of a man who has been on his feet far too many hours. Kite asked me to, oh wait, I have the ham and cheese. Perfect. First of all, here's some bread. Now the cauldron is quite empty and just warm enough for you to use. Remember, you need both the bread, ham, and cheese to make the perfect sandwich. Now, go give it a try and bring me the result. I shall see if you have it. All right. Cauldron's right here. It's kind of tough with that guy there, but boom, boom. Oh, and I think if we just click it, let's try that actually. If we click it, yeah, it puts all the needed repair, uh, recipe items in there for us. Beautiful. All right, he just gave me one piece of bread, the stingy guy. But that made two sandwiches. Beautiful. And you know what? They look so good. They're making me hungry in real life. There we go. Let's eat up. Um, talk to him again. Chef Armin wanders. Yeah, we know. Present the sandwich for inspection. Oh, it's like presenting our food to Gordon Ramsay or something. Armand wafts the scent of the grilled cheese sandwich towards his nose. Ah, the crust of the bread, the softness of the cheese, the savoriness of the ham. Perfection. You shall indeed never again go hungry in the night. Beaut. So do we eat it now? What did I just do? I pushed T by accident. What did that do? Oh, that lit the lantern. Interesting. All right, let's go to our inventory. Um, food value. I'm not sure. Let's just double click it. Did that do anything? Wait. This item cannot be used like this. Oh, okay. I'm not sure how we use it, but let's get out of here and go find what's his face. He's over here. This is him. Come here, you old alky. I have your medicine. Where's the kitchen again? Yeah, yeah, we did it. Ha! That's some fine foraging, young whelp. Before you can get a word in, Kaiden snatches the bottle, uncorks it, and drinks deeply. The old man, eyes closed in relief, lets out a deep sigh. May you sleep, may your sleep be dreamless, he speaks as if to himself. May your sleep be dreamless. Question mark. Kaiden smiles sadly, an old sailor's greeting, something one mercenary would say to another, as a prayer or not. To dwell on painful memories, the kind that comes with the work your father and I. Kaiden halts momentarily and looks at you. Your father and I would always part with those words. Now, I've held you long enough. Be on your way. All right, Kaiden's a closed off kind of fellow. I think we're good. Let's go back to our quests. 
So what does the S mean? Solved? Success. Yep, there we go. Sick. So that's success. These are good. I think we're just down to the meeting, the meeting of the minds here. So let's go talk to Lyra. Yes, let's go see Cato. All right, very well. If it pleases you, the master is in his office just ahead. And note, once you meet with the master, things may move quickly and you may not have another chance to walk the grounds. Ooh, should we more? Yes, I remember. No, I think we're good. Okay, I suppose you do, but I'll escort you nonetheless. A flicker of a smile plays across her face. She beckons for you to lead the way. I might have missed something there, but probably not. Right, right? Let me know in the comments. Okay, the opulence is faded. The shadows longer. Clearly much has changed since the last time you were here. Try to remember how long it's been. I didn't come here to reminisce. Let's go. Um, flanking the doorway are two marble statues. The craftsmanship is stunning, but the sight of the two women depicted fills you with sadness. Examine them. One you may recognize immediately, Valeria Baron, the mistress of the house. You remember her as a gray ghost, absent and unwell. The other statue depicts the girl you once knew so well, Embla Baron, daughter of the house and now a woman grown, strong and clear-eyed. Her likeness has none of her mother's cowed timidness. How is the mistress Valeria these days? How fares Embla? Lyra's eyes flicker ever so slightly. We should uh, hasten to the Master Baron. He's long been impatient to see you. But what of Master Valeria? The mistress is vacationing in the countryside, Lyra answers curtly. Be on your way. All right. I don't see Lyra or Lyra anywhere, but apparently she's with us in spirit. Okay. This looks like a comfy little place. Let's go ahead and rest. Nope. Um, oh. Oh. What am I seeing here? Oh, <gasps> hidden. No way. No way. Can we take these? Oh, I just hit the jackpot. They're all red to me. But, oh my goodness. We can sell them, right? Value 200 GP. <gasps> I'm going to loot this guy's possessions. I hope he doesn't bust me for it. There's nothing in there, but I'm going to loot it. Um, what's this? Come over here, buddy. Take the map. Why can't I interact with it? It shows it's interactable, but it won't. Maybe you got to be up next to it. Oh, there it is. Nope. <laughs> you just hit the wall. All right, whatever. I think some items, I don't know. Maybe we can interact with it later. Loot. Loot. I think we're just too low level for this stuff. All right, we've got a ton of books now. Look at that. Blue, red ones. This one we can actually use. Tome, learn, steel breath. Yeah, this was one of the options for air magic when we first started. Ryan learned steel breath. Nice. All right. Um, no, we can't interact with the door. Well, that was huge. Let's keep exploring. What was over here? Nope. What? Oh, Lyra clears her throat behind you. Not that way, if you don't mind. The master's office lies through here. Do you mind if I look around? Master Cato has summoned you, and I don't intend to keep him waiting. Besides, there is no need for you to disturb the servants and their tasks. I'll be as silent as the night. Lyra goes still for a fraction of a second, as if sensing something beyond just your perception. Then her eyes narrow, and a mischievous smile plays across her features. Through the dining hall lies the hearth. A beast lurks there. I wager you cannot make your way past the servants in the dining hall and sneak up on the beast without being noticed. What shall we wager? Well, this is obviously a mission for a stealther, which we're not, so I'm going to say on second thought. Although that's interesting. I bet you if you got a good stealth character, you could do that. Oh, there's Lyra right there. She's in the party. Okay, she didn't level up, though, so I assume that means she's not actually a permanent member. But that's interesting. I, I kind of wanted to play a stealthy, but magic overtook it. I had to go with the mage, Magos. 
All right, Cato Barron sits tall in a tasteful but modest reception room. He looks less imposing than you remember, and with a few more crow's feet. Nonetheless, he's lost none of his composure or air of casual authority. You take a seat across a formidable desk from him. This study, like the rest of the villa, is half-lit, giving a morose cast to its opulence. The older man's crease face creases into a tired but genuine smile, which momentarily lifts some of the room's oppressive mood. It's a mercy to see you again, your own man and in your prime, Cato says before a frown consumes his smile. It's just a shame our reunion is overshadowed by the fates of those we love, but perhaps, together, we can yet improve our collective circumstances. Why have you summoned me? Embla is missing. Cato's voice quivers momentarily, betraying his stoic features. Now, I beg of you, Ryan, help me find my daughter. Help her return home, where she belongs. What happened to her? She left without notice a week ago. From the scant clues we had, we believe she boarded a ship bound for one of the outer isles, Idra. She went of her own free will at the time I thought little of it. Cato begins to glower. Since then, however, there have been reports grave ones. Reports? No one and no word has left Idra for days. Rumor has it even the Imperial Augurs are in the dark. I know not how this touches the fate of my daughter, but she must be returned to me one way or another. Any idea why she left? Something has been building in her for years, an aptitude of sorts, but I suspect you already knew. In any case, it's grown much stronger lately and drives her in ways I cannot understand. I suspect she is looking for answers. But why Idra? Why indeed? There is little on the island save the port of Horin. If Idra was her destination, she must have landed there. Horin? Yes, an old imperial fort and home to a few hundred whalers, traders, and the occasional smuggler. We can only speculate as to what drew her there but it's our only lead. How can I help her? You mentioned her aptitude. An aptitude of the worst kind. It does not spring from the canonical imperial praxis. Instead, it comes from elsewhere. It is the kind the Empire does not suffer to exist. Ah, oh, rogue Magos. I hope it only answers. I hope it's only answers that she seeks. But why Idra? Why? Oh, we've already done that. All right, what can I do? Hire mercenaries, travel to Idra, and begin your search in the port of Horin. From there, I trust you do what needs to be done. Spare no cost, just bring me to my daughter. Mercenaries, yes. If nothing else, the port will be dangerous enough. But that is why I have summoned a Roland Grey-Eye to me, a crude but effective sellsword that I've good, made good use of before. He shall accompany you on this task. Roland Grey-Eye? The man is a grizzled veteran. He may be have slowed with age, but his experience and reliability more than make up for it. He's also much respected by similar men, and so will be instrumental in hiring a reliable crew. I'll take that into consideration. All right. Cato shows you his upturned palms beseeching. I know this thing I ask of you is fraught with danger, but this is your chance at approving your fortune, materially and in honor. What say you? I accept for Embla's sake. I'll do it for the gold. What makes you think I care very well for my family's name? Embla. Cato smiles softly, visibly relieved, and for a moment he looks like the man you remember. Have you any final questions or matters to discuss? Time is, I'm sure, you appreciate of the essence. Let's just get on with it. Cato stands with a poorly concealed effort. And Ryan, you stand to meet his gaze. Return her to me. There is no other outcome of this affair. Shake his hand and leave. Remain silent and leave. You have my word, Cato. Leave. Most important one right here. Let's do number three. Chapter one. 800 quest complete nice game saved do we level up we did 
Achievement, Shores of Idra, nice. Ryan reaches level two, plus two vitality, plus four attunement. For the first time in your life, you are overcome with a sense of purpose. The path ahead will undoubtedly be difficult, but you are certain it is one you are supposed to take. All right, so we've got feats. It said attributes too, right? Oh, we just gained two attributes, I think. Yeah, I believe. Anyway, so feats. Abilities. All right, so we got three points here. So with that, we could get a couple ranks here and increase our lore. Increase Max Cascade. We could open up our Earth or Fire Mage spell tree. Or we could rank up Air. That takes four ranks. Air Magic Focus, learn two new spells. That's cool. I think I'm going to do this though let's start opening up the other tiers here all right plus we have so many books i'm sure this will open up for us all right save and exit we should get two new spells yeah arcane shockwave what's that okay cost 15 att targets all opponents in the line adds condition stunned okay mark of lethargy targets an opponent anywhere in the battlefield i adds condition slowed Summon vermin targets any tile anywhere on the battlefield. Summons one of the fallen creatures in the target area tile. Rat, bat, crab, and that's it. Okay. Swarm of gnats. Interesting. Deals one to four plus magical aptitude damage. Oh, that could be super powerful because we have a very high aptitude. Anywhere in the battlefield, condition disrupted. I like the swarm a lot. And let's do slow. Yeah, let's... Um, yeah, I like slow. Obviously, it's good, but it's anywhere on the battlefield. Whereas this one is just in a line. Alright, so that's good. Nice. What the hell? Where's our boat? <gasps> okay, slowly you drag yourself from the cold water onto the relative safety of solid rock. You try and fail to stagger forwards. Oh, okay, so... There are some time jumps. I'm realizing now what's happening. In the first episode, we went through the boat experience. We crashed. When we when we started this episode today, we were at the Estate of Baron before the shipwreck. Now, we're after the shipwreck, just arriving on shore. Okay, so maybe at this point we'll find Roland. I don't know. You try and fail to stagger forwards as exhaustion washes over you in a great black wave. Oblivion takes you before you hit the rocky ground. You're awoken by the cacophonous cries of gold circling. Your body is a mass of pain and exhaustion, covered in a thousand cuts and scrapes. The large white birds gather around you in eager anticipation. What a magnificent feast your bloated corpse would make. Not today. In minutes, or perhaps hours, pass as you lay unmoving, trying desperately to will some warmth back into your body. Finally, you manage to force your eyes open. By some miracle, you are not only alive, but find yourself on the shores of the cursed island of Idra. Strewn around you is the wreckage of the Zephyr. You see no other survivors. Oh no, where's Roland? Lest you find equipment and companions soon, you may have cheated death in vain. Your character is critically injured. This means you have taken enough damage to reduce both, both your vitality and wounds. Oh. Okay. The green bar under your character's portrait represents your vitality. It's a buffer to your wounds, and as long as you have vitality left, you won't take serious wound damage. Vitality is easily lost and easily regained. Okay. Potions and healing magic restore vitality. Got it. The second purple bar represents your wounds. Losing wounds is much more serious than losing vitality. Reaching zero wounds means your character falls unconscious. Wounds can also only be recovered by resting or leveling up. Ah, so that's interesting. So vitality, is, I would I think of it almost as just like a shield before, you know, once that drops off, then you're gonna get into your life pool essentially. And unconsciousness, I imagine, leads to death. Or, well, let's find out. <clears throat> Whenever you take wound damage, you gain an injury condition as indicated by the icon on the portrait. 
injuries confer serious penalties to your character can only be removed by resting. A party full of injured members has its combat effectiveness severely reduced. Making camp and rest resting is the surest way to restore an injured character. Note that resting is not possible in every location, so plan accordingly. You can also rest at inns when you find them. Oh, okay. We go. Wait, what's this? Hmm. Barrel. Take it. Start. Um, what is this? Fishing hook. Small metal hook used by locals. Interesting. Well, we'll equip this. Oh, I might not be able to. It's a trinket. It, it, I think it's just a gray item, so to speak. Let's check over here. Blue. Tune tonics. Come on. You can also move using the WASD keys. Sometimes it's a little awkward, though, when you run into stuff. Ornate hand mirror, drinking horn. Is any of that stuff a weapon? No. No. We need bow and arrow, though. All right, how do we get up here? Wading out in the freezing surf, you lose your footing on the slick stones and fall heavily on the ground. There is a sudden blur of movement in the corner of your eye, and as you frantically try to get to your feet, you slip again. Standing above you on the large rock is a young woman dressed in nat nautical guild livery. Wet auburn hair clings to her face in the cold wind. Continue. Magi's balls. I was sure I was the only one to make it ashore. The woman leaps from the rocks and helps you back to your feet. Looking you up and down, she fetches a wine skin from her belt and offers it to you. The skin is nearly empty, save for the last mouthful of brandy. You drink it down greedily and slowly. You feel a modicum of warmth creep into your bones. You recognize the young woman's face now. She must have served on the Zephyr. What's your name? Katiana's my name. The crew calls me Cat, or rather, they did, I suppose. She looks you up and down. She looks up and down the beach with a furrowed brow. Listen, you have to get up. We need to get off this beach before you freeze, or worse, worse. There's something wrong about this place. Can't you feel it? Like a taste in your mouth. And there are beasts, huge sea creatures I ain't never seen afore. I saw them dragging the dead crewmen into a cave west of here. At least I hope they were dead. What do you suggest? We need supplies and shelter first. There might be a salvage to be had among the wreckage on the beach. I also think I spotted the chimney of a house just north of the cliffs. A warm fire and some food would go a long way. Cat offers you her hand and drags you, your, drags you to your feet. Okay, also, as I said, there's a cave west of here. I think the crabs dragged off most of the corpses. There, but what if... Oh, I'm sorry. Corpse is there, but what if? What if they're not all dead? Might be other survivors like you and me. What's more? Oh, I bet Roland's there. There's a chance one of the officers was carrying the seal when the boat sank. If we can find it, the Nautical Guild would give anything to have it returned to them. Seal? Captain Seals, it's a medallion of the sorts that is carried on every guild vessel. It's not just for show, either. They say the seals are forged by the Magi and that they have a secret powers. But I don't know nothing about that. All I know is the guild pays well to have one returned, if a ship is ever lost. It's always worn by one of the officers, but I don't think the captain had it on him when the fight broke out. Might have been the first mate was carrying it, and I think he was still alive when the ship sank. So, I would say that the cave to the west is where we should start looking. You ready? I prefer to travel alone. I have some questions first. Okay, let's go. Good, I found this bow in the cargo crate. We best find you a weapon, too. Oh, I was going to take that. Uh, too bad. <laughs> I suspect we'll need it before long. Together, you begin to move off the beach and towards whatever darkness dwells in the island's interior. There we go. If you've not already done so, this might be a good time to level up. The white cross and the character portrait indicates your character. Yeah, we know that. All right. So, you know what? I think I saw something over here. I wanted to check out on the beach still. We already searched that. Okay. See these little plots of land? I just wanted to go over here and check it out. All right. Well, oh look, there's a corpse right there. I spotted something. Okay, so, looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and save it here, guys. 
and I think this is probably a good spot to end it for today. So we're going to try and keep the episodes under an hour if possible. So don't worry though. We're doing daily uploads. Tune in tomorrow for episode three. Hit that like button. Of course, I love hearing your comments. So I appreciate anybody who drops me a comment, even if it's just to say hello. Subscribe if you haven't, and I will see you all on the next one. Hey everyone, I just want to give a personal thank you to my Patreon supporters. Their contributions help make my work possible and I am tremendously grateful to them. I'd also like to extend an invitation to you to help support my work on Patreon as well. Your donations allow me to upgrade my PC and avoid the dreaded hardware despair. It also gives me more time to devote to new projects and create longer content such as live streaming. No matter what what you decide. Thank you for visiting my channel.